So good morning, May 3rd, 2016. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Light. Today is the makeup class day for the semester, and that is the very last class for this particular course. So let's get started. So welcome back to today's very last class. We have three speakers today for the speech of the semester. And uh, in order, it should be Sheila, Romina, and then Francis. And Francis is not in here, but near you, I do it, okay? Have you signed here? Okay, let me double check, all right? So, did you sign up right here before? After? Uh, 29, okay. Yes, okay, right here. But you have not uploaded the PowerPoint yet. You upload it? Okay, let's, let's double check. Uh, oh, right here, yes. Okay, we have four speakers today. So, after Sheila, it's Romina. And after Romina, it should be Neil. And then finally, it's Francis. All right? So, um, yes, it's the very last class of this semester. So, Sheila, are you ready? Okay, I pass to the time and you become the first, the first speaker. All right?
high school, uh, it was always um, teachers giving us materials and how we had to um, use those materials given to us and just do a complete organization, uh, uh, organized um, report or presentation according to what the teacher gave us. But in this course, it's more um, it's more about how we go out and search for resources, how we go out and search for um, for information that we need to uh, in order to expand our uh, report, expand our topic. So it's uh, it's a pretty big change from high school to university, but I think it is something that um, we will be using in, in the next four years, in my next four years of university life. So I would like to give a big thanks to Professor Rod and um, my teammates, Kenny, Leo, Francis, and every um, all the other classmates that uh, listen to our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheila. <laughs> So the next speaker, it's Romina. You just need to scroll down and you just see your PowerPoint over there. Yeah. Right there, yes.
uh, we practice self-regulated learning where um, me and my group, um, Peter, Tom, and Joanna, we set a goal um, guided by Professor Brad where we thought about tasks and how to accomplish them. We developed a plan somewhat rough and we just kind of winged it along the way where we picked a way to accomplish a task and we monitored each other's progress and evaluated our own progress. And we also, and I feel like problem-based learning is an extension of um, the previous learning because after, all, after you did that, you had to think critically and analyze what you have learned to figure um, outside the classroom problems. And during the learning con during this last learning contract, I specifically talked about what is photo sharing, um, which is um, simply the uploading and sharing of photos. And there are several services offered by these sites, such as uploading, hosting, managing, and sharing photos publicly or privately, which is up to you. And um, my team and I we managed to combine our topics together, and I managed to learn about blogs, um, taxonomy, and podcasting. Um, people who use photo sharing put themselves out there, basically, and they're advertising their various skills for people to notice, and their various products for people to notice. That is why they're able to do business. And I concluded with photo sharing gives us a certain freedom of expression, but we should be mindful about what we post, because sometimes what we post is to other people. Um, to sum it all up, I learned about how to do learning journals in the observation, um, interpretation, and application format, which is very useful, I think, in my other classes. Um, I probably won't follow it strictly, but I will follow the OIA. Um, I learned how to operate a, a VP in the Google, which is very useful, I think. Um, I practiced my teamwork skills, I practiced my um, skills in communicating verbally uh, in the classroom and through the internet in the public discussion forum, and I practiced time management, which I'm very good at. And I'd like to thank uh, my group, uh, Professor Pat, and uh, those here, and I hope to see you guys in the other classes. Well, thank you, Romina, to share with us learning throughout the semester. So the next person, next speaker, I think is Neil first, before Francis is Neil. Yes, thank you, Neil. There's a button called Slide Show at the, at, the, at the bottom. It's right there. The screen shape, right here. Click on this screen shape. Yes, the one next to it. The one next to it. Yes. First of all, I have learned how to rewrite our learning content to organize our notation in the class. In learning content work, I have learned about the internet safety and protection. For example, we always take a selfie and upload it on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, something like that. But we don't think your individual information will be stolen, including the phrase. So everyone can know your, your phrase through the Facebook and upload the, the pictures. 
hoping that it's still in safety in our life. Second, I know what is information and technology. Let the internet users enhance their knowledge about it. Some more people don't know the advantage of using computer. They also do not know how to access the sign production. This puts question to let them understand the advantage or disadvantage about is the benefit or disadvantage about using the internet. During, during the, uh, the discussion with my good colleagues, I realized there is an excellent experience to improve my organized ability and communication skill. Through the discussion, I found that the, my good members' comments are so popular, are so important parts to learn of my good ideas. Uh, in learning culture feed, I have learned about eBusiness on YouTube. We are getting some information from the internet. At the very beginning, we have a general agreement considering the area, area of resource and distribution job for each one of us. And then we need to summarize our ideas about e-business on YouTube. And we have speci specific job of each other. We have finally conducted a self question about this topic. Other thing I have learned in class is OIA questions. After I read the sources which provide by professors and research on the internet, I get my observation and interpretation. The OIA question helped me to separate my learning in, in learning in the learning journal, journal to conclusion. I feel so enjoyable for my discussion. Finally, after finish the discussion, I get more knowledge. We can do the contest step by step and it's a good experience. Finally, thank you for my team member get efforts to finish the project. We have a very team work team and it's something I would like to say thank you. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Neil, for sharing with us your learning journey in this semester. So the final speaker today is Francis. Francis, are you ready? Uh, in the 
semester. And so uh, each graduate I improved my reading skill and the writing skill. And also uh, it improved my uh, my ability to to search information. Well, uh, uh, because I'm not very I mean I used to uh, write and read very story and well you no know, in the mid during the midterm or, or before uh, to do a report, well, it, it takes many times, uh, especially when I do the research uh, uh, about the background or something like that. Well, however, uh, after this, uh, I because of the, uh, uh, I do know uh, many methods, and uh, it's better than before. Uh, I mean, it's better than the beginning, but uh, it still could be better in, in, I mean, in the future. And I also learned some, use some tools to, uh, to uh, find and help me to, to uh, find my information and in some, uh, or uh, I also found some uh, website, uh, which is, uh, I mean the searching, the search engine to, to, uh, to help me find some reliable sources and something like that. And after that, uh, this also create my ability to plan a plan, especially uh, during the learning project B. And before we, we, we start our work, we have to separate, I mean, uh, uh, the, we have to do our job divisions and, and decide which, uh, which uh, members to do uh, which part of the job. And that also did, uh, the ability in our uh, communication and something like that. Well, actually, it's also improved my confidence uh, to uh, asking questions as uh, in this class, uh, we are supposed to uh, not being uh, taught to learn students, but uh, learn to learn students. And uh, under uh, Dr. Fred, uh, I thank you for your teaching, and uh, I'm before I mean, I am more confident in uh, asking, asking questions, uh, no matter uh, to teachers or to the classmates. And actually, it also improved my, uh, I mean, maybe not, uh, I mean, I'm maybe not a good presenter. However, uh, my confidence were, were much more better than before. Well, it's, uh, after uh, uh, many times of Crushing uh, is yeah, is is this can help, and it's also uh, improve the government about uh, uh, the organization of of I mean synthesize the information, and in the midterm uh, examination, uh, it is also as I mentioned before, uh, is absolutely uh, improve my writing and reading skill. Uh, because, uh, as I mentioned, I, I used to read and write very slowly. Uh, but in the midterm examination, uh, there's only uh, 90 minutes. And so it actually improved uh, my, my uh, reading and, and writing skill. And, well, uh, well uh, actually, uh, the digital divide in 21st century is my topic. In my midterm exam, I think this topic is very uh, quite significant uh, to to hit me. Is uh, is talking about uh, many of the people <coughs> in the world couldn't share the technology uh, we uh, we have used, or, or they, I mean, they some of them are not able to open a computer, and they do not have a cell phone, and I think uh, the gap. Uh, the digital uh, divide uh, in the 21st century is talking about the gap between this kind of people and, and us. I mean, the, the, the numbers is, is become more and more big. So, uh, uh, after the learning conscious students will be, uh, uh, it, uh, actually, uh, there are some problems in, in my PPT part. Uh, I will fix it uh, later. But uh, I'm going to share about what I learned from the learning project B, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, separate from the from the writing.
think that using skill, the communication is, is the main part. Um, so at the very beginning, uh, as uh, our topic in learning country is the e-business on uh, YouTube. However, uh, we may have some uh, conflicts or some argument uh, in our team. And uh, also thank you for our member to, to uh, uh, thank you for your join and, and, and give uh, many, many good ideas. And so uh, after that, uh, I, I think the most I, I learned from the learning philosophy is the, the communication skill and also how to plan, uh, how to plan a plan. Yeah, it, it is, it is uh, very interesting to plan what you have to do and if you uh, have a very good plan, and you follow it very well and everybody will do it. And yeah, this is the sum topic uh, I've learned in the class. Uh, actually, uh, the first one is the digital divide that I've uh, learned, I've said before. And the second one is the thing, uh, internet uh, security. Well, actually, uh, at first I want to, uh, uh, to talk about uh, the, uh, the in the internet technology, uh, the, the information technology, but uh, because I, I'm, uh, I'm working in an IT community, and, but however, I think the internet security is more and more important as well. Uh, in my, I mean, uh, in the place where I work, and uh, some, some, uh, some of my uh, careers were uh, some guy in the company were getting an email uh, that was very hot before about uh, to lock your, your information in, in your computer so you couldn't they couldn't uh, open their file in their computer. So uh, this is well I, I mean it looks uh, different is I mean it's not uh, the internet security it seems Every topic is very important, very important, but nobody really cares. Uh, I think uh, most of the case, uh, the, I mean the crime, uh, they, uh, the criminal success because uh, the people, the, the all, I mean the awareness of the people were, were not enough. So uh, it gave the criminal a, a chance to, to do something bad and basically that's Okay, thank you Francis for sharing with us your learning in the semester. <laughs> now it's really time to see if we could uh, have that one step forward after the whole semester training. Um, I would like to share with you uh, a little bit on uh, this extra day makeup class uh, the topic I prepared for you today is um, I would like you to take a look at uh, a case method, a case learning method which was developed at Harvard Business School in 2007. Of course, you can find something new today. When I checked on the website, I actually got several new pieces. But I still want you to look at this case in 2007. It's about a learning method. It's also about a teaching approach. Uh, it's for first year student, okay? And uh, one of the interesting thing about this approach is it's theme-based learning and also discussion-based teaching inside the classroom. Uh, we do have a classroom like this at this school, uh, actually the first floor, but not many people are going to use the classroom the way you're going to see it today. Uh, maybe uh, in fact, the business administration sometime you will experience that. Because most of the work you're going to see today in this particular video is based on project-based learning, all right? Well, when we talk about project-based learning, it's a little bit different from problem-based learning, but the nature is very similar. The nature is one step forward from problem-based learning. When we talk about problem-based learning, we talk a lot about the process learning in which do a lot of the information gathering, discussions, 
as synthesis, reflections. But when you come to the project-based learning, it is the product which you are going to produce at the end that counts. Uh, so it's very interesting. And here, you will learn a lot of effective teamwork and collaborations. It's a continuation of what you're going to develop after problem-based learning. And of course, uh, a lot of things you can study. So why not spend about 5 to 15 minutes here to get you a good start on this, OK? Suppose you're getting to study in a half business school. And this is what you would experience. When you're first approaching a class, 8.30 in the morning, I'm walking off the class. I'm about ready to teach. The first thing I'm thinking about is, where are they? What's going to be on the students' minds? The morning before teaching is an important period for me. I have to go through my whole pre-teaching ritual. I have my pre-teaching trance. If you watch professional baseball players, most really good baseball players, when they come to bat, they do the exact same movements as they prepare for the ball. I've been here for 22 years, and I'm still nervous every day I walk into the classroom. I still don't know exactly how the discussion will play out. The 10 minutes before class are a really fascinating time, because you've got about 15 things you want to get done in those 10 minutes. Just before class, I'm usually brushing up on case facts. I just need to be firm in my particular opinion because you know, there are 89 of the opinions that are going to come out during the classroom that I need to either agree with or disagree with. I might kind of skim through some of my notes or, or kind of think about um, you know, whether in my learning team somebody brought up an issue that I hadn't thought about before. The second thing I'm thinking about is how am I going to get started? What's the opening question? But equally important, who's the opening student? Who's going to be the first person? who I ask to lay out the issues. And as the second hand passes the 12 o'clock, we get going. All right, good morning. Our first real taste of competitive dynamics is the case on Holland Sweetener Company in the asset chain business. Your role is that of Winfrey Vermees. You're the CEO of Holland Sweetener Company. You're entering the market for asset chain for the first time you're facing Winfrey Sweetener's competition. And you've got to ask yourself, how do I think Newton Sweet is going to respond? With a price war or with normal competition? What do you say? To me, the reason that this method is so effective is that it really mirrors what managers do in real life. We put the student in the seat of that uh, manager or that employee confronting a problem. It's fun, right? I mean, there's a lot of the active engagement. It's hard in a lot of ways as well, though. Um, nothing is still infected. You've got to be prepared and you've got to come ready to play every day. The most fulfilling classroom experiences at HBS, you can tell, come with intense preparation from all sides. It's crucial. If you aren't prepared for the class, you can't engage as much. You can't have a kind of friendly, dynamic discussion with all your classmates. Individual preparation is a solo affair. You go through the case, try to master the details, develop the supporting analysis, come up with recommendations. I'm trying to develop a ritual. I think um, getting a bit of an overview at first and then trying to fill in the details is definitely a better way than just starting at the beginning and trying to read all the way through to the end. Sometimes just working back with all the lower numbers, sometimes getting into in-depth detail, uh, creating full write-ups that then I've heard to my learning team in the morning. I really try to really imagine myself as the protagonist, and it really does require um, concerted effort to do that. The day before a case, you'll find people in Spangler, or in Baker, or in kind of the dorm lounges saying, oh, what was your opinion about that? Or what did you think about this? Um, so it's really kind of open dialogue. We have uh, a folder for, for each of you. The overview, one page summary, a board plan, and then at least my shot at the Faculty prepare far more for a case discussion than any individual student. I find it takes me five to ten times as much time as it typically takes a student. There are cases I've taught numerous times, and I get as excited about it the tenth time I teach it as, as I do the first time, maybe more so, because I know what the possibilities are and I know, I know what the richness is. Here we'll be giving the students particularly to be better at 
analyzing individual competitors, understanding the generic threats that accompany success, uh, and uh, we'll be introducing the tools, particularly the, the tool of game theory. I usually put them in the position of uh, Wolfram Vermees and try to get you to think about, will it be a price war? The thing that's always impressed me is the extent to which there are actually debates in teaching groups. That here, a set of people trained in the same disciplines around the same materials can have very different views about the best way to uh, orchestrate a case or even different answers to the question, you know, what's this case really about? I expect students to get their heart and soul to a case. Most importantly, I expect the students to put themselves in the shoes of the protagonist of the case and ask themselves seriously, what would I do? And I want them to think very seriously, what would they do if they really had that situation in their eyes? These are questions where there are different perspectives. You can marshal the facts in the case and reach very different conclusions. So part of what students do is they decide day in and day out and they get in the habit of making decisions. Future Suite patented the, the use and blend of this sugar replacement. The learning team experience has been absolutely invaluable to the case method. I'm not sure I could have made it through the first semester without it. Because I assume that there would be 5% reduction in the U.S. price, then uh, HSC will always want to enter. And we hold ourselves to pretty high standards as far as being able to come up with our rationale for why we would do what we are going to do. I'm still not buying. I just don't get the fact that if Ford, Coke, and Pepsi are competitively managed and the stuff that everybody's buying now is with a nutrition label on their can, they have no other option to go to anything else unless they completely change off of our product. And what we then try and bring to it again uh, is a different perspective, a different viewpoint, hopefully a different approach to looking at the same information. The fact that they were neck and neck in the diet industry and use that to really fuel the uh, rivalry that used NutraSweet. Like we have someone in our learning team who's from Argentina who so works in a sugar factory in Argentina. Just like every case, it turns out there's someone that has some direct personal experience. We have people from different backgrounds, so there are a couple of finance guys, a marketing person, there's somebody from a tech background. So it's very helpful to kind of bounce ideas off of each other in the mornings when we're really prepared to have a debate and have a discussion in class. Yeah. You could also think about a sign signaling effect. If you don't send a right signal to the market to this new entrant, then you probably have many new small entrants in the future. So it's not uncommon that someone will say in class, uh, when I first read the case, I thought X, but after talking with people, some people in my learning team, I've actually evolved my thinking uh, to the following. So I think in the learning teams, you want students to engage some of the same muscles that they will in the classroom to say, um, here's an opportunity for me to, to go out on the limb, all right? I, I have this idea and uh, I, I'd like your feedback. For Vermees, looking at your competitor, looking at your industry, how do you expect they will respond? With a price war or with normal competition? What do you say? Show us that. Um, I actually think that they will respond with a price war. Why? Um, particularly, Paul, if you look at Europe and Canada in a vacuum, you would think that they're going to lose money in short. I have a case in front of me, I have a right up in front of me, and I'm really looking at what are the key points. Like, in my head, I'm already thinking, like, all right, top three things that I want to get across in my um, 30 seconds. And is that enough price war going to accomplish that end? The knowledge that you might be called upon to make an intelligent, coaching argument in front of people whose opinion you care about does motivate you in those off hours. Who sees it very differently? Is Marvin, what's going on? I think they're very confident in their, um, their brand and strategy for we accept everyone's backgrounds and everyone's perspectives to the point where we can actually hear them out. And I feel like everyone does a really good job of listening to the point where they can think about it and say whether they agree or disagree, and then coming up with a compelling reason as to why they agree or disagree. Kara, in or out? And this is where I think the behavioral issues are overwhelming. They're going to continue to fight because they've already invested in this. 
Um, so I think they're going to just kind of keep throwing good money after bad. I know I cannot compete with interest rate on price, but I, I might be able to compete with them on brand. So what I'll try to do is try to do some like customer research and try to really get the uh, HSC product out there and really get it to the point where there's some critical mass as far as brand recognition. And then approach Pepsi and say, hey Pepsi, here's an additional level of um, aspartame that you can have to compete with Coke who's using the Nutrisweet. Sure, it's what you role play Pepsi. What do you, how do you respond to Phil? I have a couple of problems. I mean, one, your product isn't branded yet. And, and it takes quite a bit of time. <laughs> I see that you're trying to give me a point of differentiation to go after my competitor. But to be honest, I just don't have the faith in you yet <laughs> to be willing to take that gamble. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think fun is one of the most underrated aspects of the case method. Um, learning shouldn't always be difficult. Learning shouldn't be painful. There's a certain element of joy that comes with learning. Jenny, yeah, another proposal. Yeah, so I'm going to go Pepsi on and say, I'm only going to work with you. If you just work with me, then I'll lower your price and you're going to get the competitive advantage from working with me, whereas NutraSuite's not going to have to match that because they're just working with Coke. That sounds a little bit better. <laughs> I found that. I learn a ton from my professors, but I really learn the most from my fellow section mates. You never, ever, ever, ever enter a price war if you don't have credible low cost. If you ever do that and I learn about it, I will deny that I ever knew your heart. Okay? Ever, ever. The very important thing you're saying, they entered that in the advantage. There was not a superior gap between cost and what was paid. That uh, was a major lesson of the case. And in addition, it drew on concepts we had built up over the previous half dozen cases to show that things had kind of come together for a set of people. We'll continue to look at competitive dynamics on Thursday when we look at the fascinating battle between British satellite broadcasting and Sky Television. Thanks. My favorite classes are those where the debate is still raging 20 minutes after class, and we can't stop it. And you really give a lot in those eight minutes as far as listening and vocalizing your perspective. You, know, you really start to see why the case method works so well because you're surprised at how much you remember from the case, but also from what people's responses were to the case. I mean, there are very specific situations that any manager is going to experience um, at some point in their career. We teach people in many ways the courage to act under uncertainty. The facts in a case are always limited. The amount of information you have at hand is by design quite compressed. You're working under great time pressure. We're asking people to learn how to take a stand. It's not a passive process, and frankly, management's not a passive process. They get to try out many of the component processes in management in the classroom. They need to build muscles around things like judgment. The answer to most questions is, it depends. If one can leave here understanding under what circumstances you would go left and under what circumstances you would go right, then you've got a depth of knowledge and you've got it kind of in your gut as well as in your, your head. I think Harvard Business School is the finest teaching institution in the world. I don't just mean among business schools. Teaching is in the fabric of the culture. We go back in a long tradition, started probably even before Socrates, but we can certainly go back to there. We want to continue in that tradition. Some things never get old.
this only comes out as very related to our cost right and technologies and now. And as all that we can recommend the same for the best size by the ad, by the new tools, and many same many resource message, uh, many resources we can use in the normal mass. And the second one contrast is one social responsibility in the information age. And in this very context, I this very related to our life because uh, when we create an account by Facebook or, or, or Facebook and you need to put your personal information upload to the this account and whether the whether the, um, the website the um, some people may invade our account if we don't protect our information and everyone should have the social responsibility to protect their account. And What's more, I learned them to learn. And when you find a database, and you shouldn't terrified, you need to, you need to um, run this database again and find something new from this database. And I learned cooperation is uh, more easy. What impressed me a lot is when we do a pro, uh, group project, we really discuss with each other. And, and when we discuss with each other, we will have some inspirations when we discuss. And only your cooperation in an effective way can do, do a great work. And families, I want to thank uh, Dr. Wes and my many other families and my roommates. Uh, because of them, I learned more things from this semester. And I'm looking forward to know more information about web technologies and that in the future lives. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, to help us to understand your perspective of the semester's learning. So, to close up today's class, first of all, let me finish the attendance call at SPUSO. And then we'll come back to share with you a little bit more about uh, the learning today. Today is the make up class, the 29th class of the semester. So, Candy is not here, not here, Nero is here. Annie is not here today. Jishun uh, is not here. Tom is here. Connie is not here. And then uh, Mark is not here. Jerry is not here. Tammy is not here. Uh, Francis is here. Joanna is here. Peter is here. Uh, Dormita is here. Jennifer is here. Sheila is here. And then Dara is not here. Kathy is here. Alex is here, Ethan is not here today. So that's it. It's a wonderful experience to be with you. And it, it's a wonderful experience. Indeed. Let's say we go back through the whole semester. Okay? As you can see that from week one to week um, uh, 15 today. Particularly in the last two weeks, week 14 and week 15, okay, I've given you some material which has gone beyond the course material, but it's very much in the area of the skills based development, such as the time management, your problem solving ability, um, the ability to reason, uh, particularly the critical thinking stuff interesting uh, principles called the 9010 principles but in fact um, in fact the people also this is a very good this is a very good link on this guy is dead now but he has done many many good things
the seven habits of highly effective people. Uh, let's see, and the time management stuff, which I hope you do enjoy it, about the 80-20% rule. And finally, this week, uh, particularly the ideas of project-based learning. And you might take a look at case study. This is an example of the case study. Learning occurs everywhere, and we haven't thought a lot about how to design the environments in which human beings are supportive of the fact that they're likely to be engaged in learning activities. So a lot of classrooms are designed to support a kind of teaching that has gone on in classrooms for hundreds of years. A teacher is at the front of a group of students, all of whom are facing forward, and their job is mostly to listen. And many theorists think schooling would be much better if learners were much more actively engaged in the work. We have a real challenge in that we have a lot of classrooms that are very traditional. There really is no flexibility there, and the teacher really is locked in to one particular way of teaching, and the students really are locked into one particular type of classroom experience. Many people think that engaged learning for students means the teacher gets out of the way. That's a very simplistic way of understanding the role of the teacher. Getting young people to do something really serious is actually really hard work. Change is occurring. Universities are starting to evolve to support the change in pedagogies. And to do so, you need to implement collaboration in the classroom. We have faculty who are going out to the web, pulling up videos, using social media, really bringing all of that into the classroom. So that it isn't just that faculty member providing a lecture, students passively taking notes, but rather really engaging the students and that the technology that becomes the tool for that. So it's been really important to try a variety of furniture setups as well as have that flexibility to change the setup on the fly. We're able to really explore and engage the students and involve the students in a variety of ways. We try to meet that challenge of the constraints of the space where we're not going to be able to build new classrooms all the time. So I think the ideal classroom configuration would be one in which there was a lot of flexibility, where the students can see each other, and where discussion is possible. Another feature of the ideal classroom would be to have lots of public surface for writing. Those are writing surfaces that have some of the flexibility that's desirable in the same way that the seating ought to have that same kind of flexibility. I hope that in the coming decade or two that we see the need to study how technology and how the physical environment, how furniture, how space play in the way that that instructional dynamic takes place. Well, our learning comment in this room and also in the connected building provide a little bit of this kind of environment. The facts are going to take, yet the computing facility is not strong enough. And this is an example of configurations. Oh, of course, you'll see a little bit more there, but uh, we're not interested in so many of the commercials. So, I think that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much for coming back. Um, love to be with you this semester. Now, I've already given you all the scope of the contract number three, you can just check it. And then I will start bringing your portfolio starting from tomorrow. So please get rid of your portfolio as soon as possible. And you will be able to see the first versions of your great summary by the end of next Monday, which I'm going to send you through the Buddha environment. And I'll also give you a day before that. You have to respond to me, otherwise nothing can be done once it's completed. Okay? So I hope you enjoy this semester and watch for the coming email into your new app uh, through the Moodle environment concerning your brain. Okay? So it's very important. Okay, nice to have you here. I'll see you sometime on campus. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>